Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Earlier in the week, I was working with a client who had a primary WAN connection and then a secondary WAN connection. The secondary WAN connection had a block of five static IPs. This client wanted the student network to route over a different IP than the staff network. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then we're gonna also apply DNS filters from dnsfilter.com to block out social media as well as try to block out a website. Although Ubiquiti does have content blocking, we're gonna be using dnsfilter.com. I just signed up for a free trial. I haven't used it too much, but it seems to work okay. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do so is to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com. So first let's take a look at the network topology. My primary internet is coming in on port eight on my UDM SE. I'm just using it there for some testing. And then we have my secondary internet that has the block of five IPs and that's going into port 10. We can see my WAN IPs here. These aren't my real IPs, but they do end in 58, 59, and 60. I will be blurring them out, but I will show those last numbers. So we'll have 192.168.100.58, 59, and 60. Then it's plugging into my aggregation switch. Down below, we have my enterprise switch. And then we have some computers plugging in, one for staff and one for student. I'm just going to switch the VLAN on this computer to show you that it's working. So first, let's take a look at the secondary internet connection that has those block of IPs. We could see I've set it to static and we could see that the dot .58 is the router and we're giving it a slash 28 or 255.255.255.240. We could also see the gateway IP, which is dot .57. So if we want to add these other IPs into here, we could add an IP or we could add an IP range. I'm just going to do it one by one. So the next one we'll put in is our dot 59. So we put in the IP address, the dot 59, and then we need to give it its subnet mask, which is a slash 28. And then we could press add. Now that one's added. We could add dot 60 and then press the add button again. And that's it. Now we have 58, we have 59 and we have 60. So we could apply the changes. Now with those extra IPs added into our WAN connection, I need to create a staff network and a student network. So we'll create a new network. I'll call this one staff. This network is running over my default WAN, but we're gonna to wanna to select one of the other IPs so we can see secondary WAN connection. I'm gonna hit the drop down menu and select dot .59. I'm just gonna leave everything else on default and then we'll press add network. Now I need to add another network for the students. So we'll call it student. And we're gonna do the same thing for the secondary WAN connection. We're gonna put that on dot .60. Now with those networks created, I need to switch this computer to be on one of those other VLANs. So we'll go to my USW Enterprise 24 PoE. We'll go to ports and then we'll go to port manager. From here, I know that my computer is on port four. I'll click on it. And then in the dropdown for port profile, I'm gonna switch this to be on the student network and then apply the changes. Now we can see that I'm getting an IP from the student network at 192.168.3.195. If we go up to a web browser and type in what is my IP, it's still not gonna give me the correct IP. We wanna be routing through .59. And as you can see here, the last digit of my IP right now is .15. So we need to create a traffic route for this. So now going back to my UDMSE, I'm under traffic management and we're gonna create a new route. So we'll create new and it's going to be all our traffic. Our target is going to be our student network. So if we scroll down, we'll be able to see student. And then we're going to tell it to go out WAN2. And since we have the dot .59 address in our network as our secondary WAN, it will route through there. Now with that traffic route enabled, we could see from what's my IP that we're getting that dot .59, which is exactly what we're supposed to get. Now we would need to create another traffic route to have the staff go through. It's the exact same way. I'm going to do that and then we'll go on to the DNS filter. Now we're at dnsfilter.com and this is what I'm gonna to use to block out some social media and then a website for my staff account. So what we need to do, we need to go over to deployments first and then we need to add a new site. So we could add site. This one I'm gonna call student. The physical location we'll put in, I'll just say Toronto, Ontario. And then we need to create a policy, which I haven't done yet. Under IPs and DNS host name, you could either put your public IP or a DNS name, or you could fill the current IP. Right now I'm still sitting on the student network, so I could fill the IP and this will put in the dot .59 for me. Now with the dot .59 in there, I'm gonna press save. Now to create a policy to block our social media accounts, I'm gonna go to filtering and then I'm gonna press add. I'll just call it social media. And then we we'll press create. And there's a bunch of different categories that we could click on here. We're just going to stick with social networking for now. 
Now going back to our deployments, we need to specify this category. So we'll click on deployment and then under policy and schedule, we could see that there's none there currently, but if we click on it, we could choose that new policy of social media. So now that that policy has been added, the next step that we need to do, we need to specify the DNS for our students. We could see that DNS filter resolvers are down below 36.36 .36 and 37.37. .37. So I'm going to copy these DNS IPs, go back to my UDM SE, and then click on my student network. Under advanced on my student network, we're going to want to go to manual, and then we'll scroll down and then we'll click under DHCP service management, hit the drop down menu, and then we're going to want to enable the DHCP DNS server. Now under here, we could put those two DNF servers. So I'll just copy and paste them in. And after those are copied and pasted in, we could press apply changes. This will take a minute for changes to apply. Once this is done, we'll see if we could hit social media. Okay, so the changes have applied and we could verify by going NS lookup and we could see which DNS server we're using, 103.247.36.36. So if I open up a Chrome tab and try to go to Instagram.com, it's gonna just show us this is a private connection. Even if we went to advanced, there's no way to get to the site. So the DNS filter is blocking this. Now going back to dnsfilter.com, we can see that this is now green, which means it is being our DNS server. Now we're gonna wanna add the staff network. It's running over that dot 60, so a different IP, and we're gonna wanna filter different things. So I'm gonna give it a name of staff, same physical location, which will be Toronto. The policy we won't put in there yet, but then under IP and hostname, I'm going to put the dot 60. Now with the dot 60 in, we're going to press save. Now going back to our filtering policies, I'm going to add a new one and we're going to call this block website. And then we could go to our allow or we could go to a block list. I'll click on the block list. Under the block list, I'm just going to add a domain. This domain is going to be my website, www.mactelecomnetworks.com. I'm going to press save and it's probably going to tell me that I need to add a few more things. It's saying the domain mactelecomnetworks.com to block it. We need to also block these two. So I'm going to add the C names to it. Now going back under deployments, we could see the staff network, the dot 60 doesn't have a policy. So we're going to add a policy to it. And that policy is going to be to block the website. Now I'm going to put this computer onto the staff network and we'll see if we could get to my website. Now I'm on the staff network and I've set the DNS to point to our filtering. Let's see if we could get to my website. And now we can see that it's hitting Bitdefender. It's saying, take me back to safety or I understand the risk anyway. So I'm going to click on that. And this is still being web filtered. So we can see that the domain is blocked due to network filtering policy. So that's going to be it for this video. I just thought it would be interesting to show you that we could do some policy-based routing based on IPs if we have a block of IPs. And we could also do DNS filtering with an external site. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.